I love Gunna's music. Uh, and we've known each other for a while. So he's like, come be in the video. You get a break in, I'm like, say less. Hold on, was that a real trade? He was like, if you be in this video, you get a Birkin? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't do anything for free. Of course not. You know? Of course not. For Complex News, it's 360 with Speedy Mormon. I'm him, and today we are joined by a successful businesswoman. She's an actress. She's also a person who knows the Pledge of Allegiance in Spanish. How did you know that? Jordan Woods is here. We have to know this. What's up, Jordan? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well. Uh, thank you, first and foremost, for having us here in your beautiful home uh, in a place where there's no cell phone service. No. Uh, but what has life been like for you? Obviously, it's a crazy time uh, for, for many people in our world, but what's life like for Jordan Woods right now? Life is changing every single day. Um... It's a good question. I'm someone that believes in doing everything. So it's just about where do you start? Finding the balance, finding myself, establishing myself. Um, and COVID kind of put a lot of things in perspective, I think, for everyone. Um, I would say it, it gave us all time to slow down, which we needed. And if you don't slow down, God will slow you down. But in this sense, the whole world had to slow down. Right. So it was actually a beautiful thing. I think that there was a lot of trauma and tragedy, of course, but through that, I think there was also a lot of beauty. But as for me, I'm just figuring it out. <laughs> Every yeah. day I'm like, okay, how can I do, what can I do to be better, to make myself better? And if I don't have anything to do, I'm like, okay, can I go to the gym? Let me go work out. I do it for my mind, I do it for my wellness, but I really think that everyone's gotten to see me evolve as a person, a young adult from a teenager to a woman. I'm still finding my way, but I had to do it in front of everybody. Yeah. So it's been a journey. So with that said, walk me through what a day in the life of Jordan Woods is like these days. What does it look these like? These days. Well, I've been traveling quite a bit. I've been really taking the time to establish myself, my businesses, what the next move is. And it's crazy because in this generation, you feel like if you're not doing something or doing things and putting it on social media, people feel like you're not doing anything. They right. feel like you're failing. And I saw a tweet um, that somebody said, I try not to look at my <laughs> myself too much, but I like to be tapped in. I like to know what people are saying. So someone's like, what does Jordan even do? I'm like, what don't I do? Mm. I am a amazing sister, girlfriend, daughter, family person. <laughs> oh. My mom is looking like, hmm. <laughs> I think that I work really hard every day just being a good person in general. Um, but I'm really on my entrepreneurship right now. Yeah, I cook all the time. I'm like, I'm just like a regular girl, but just making shit happen. Yeah. I want to talk about some of these things that you named, but first I want to talk about like the criticism like that. When you see a comment like that, do you feel like you have to defend yourself or do you kind of just brush it off? When I someone see, says like, what yeah. does Jordan Woods do? Like what, what comes to your mind? I sit and I'm like, damn, I'm about to go and sit. And then I'm like, wait. What are you doing? Mm. Because if you feel like you have to ask what I'm doing, clearly you're not doing something. So I'm like, I can't even be bothered by what the comments say because if you have the energy and the time to do that, it's actually flattering. You're going and you're posting about me. It just, I guess it, it just helps. It keeps business going. It keeps the conversation moving in yeah. your direction, right? Exactly. Keeps your name on the... I, sometimes I want to respond, but then I'm like, no. I'm How do you find it in you to not? Because somebody like me, I'd be like, I'm saying something. Um, I just feel like people feed off of negativity. So if you feed into that one time, somebody's going to see, oh, I can get a response by her if I say something negative. So then I'm just going to keep saying negative something things negative to her part. because it gets under her skin. I think the thing about me in general, in real life and on social media, I'm very unbothered. I'm not bothered and affected by a lot of things around me. So to get me bothered takes a lot. Um, but if I am, I'm not going to let you see it. <laughs> yeah, holding it down, suppressing it. Yeah, well, 
not suppressing. But just holding it down. But just keeping it to myself. Because everything passes. You just got to give it. You might be mad in that hour, but in the next 10 minutes, you're over it. So just don't react out of emotion. Because times when I do react out of emotion, I'm like, I said too much. <laughs> yeah, don't we all. Uh, something else that you said that I wanted to touch on is you said you feel like you've kind of had to grow up in front of so many people, right? Uh, have you ever imagined what it may have been like to not have had to go through that, to have what a lot of people would call just like a regular lifestyle? Yeah, I think about that all the time. I actually think about it more than I don't think about it because I do face different types of struggles. It's um, a beautiful thing, and I'm so blessed and fortunate to be in this position. I think that everything kind of evolved naturally from my dad working in the industry and being a sound engineer for television and growing up around Hollywood. It's funny because everyone's like, oh, well, you grew up with this and you had this. Yes, I was in a blessed position, but just because I'm around somebody who has it does not mean that it's mine. So I got to reap the benefits of certain aspects of that. But when it comes down to it, I got to figure out how to pay my bills. I got to figure out how to keep the lights on. Just because I'm in something doesn't mean that it's mine. Um, so with that being said, this lifestyle happened authentically, but I'm still figuring it out. And people are so quick to be like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Um, you should be doing this, but you don't know what it's like to be me on a daily basis or what I'm working on or how long it takes to create the things that I want to create because I am somebody who, if I put my name on it, I want it to be, in my eyes, perfect. Mm -hmm. I want it to be what I envision it to be. So it takes time. Things take a lot of time. Making clothes takes a lot of time. And people want just quick. In, in this generation of instant gratification, people want things tomorrow. I'm like, but if it's not good enough, then you're gonna complain that right. it's not good. So it's gonna take time, but I'm just figuring it out. Every day is a, is a new struggle, a new journey, especially being an entrepreneur because you're faced with obstacles daily. What do you think, if you had to imagine or paint that picture, what does like a regular Jordan Woods look like? Like just a regular person? Like me on a daily basis? No, no, no. <laughs> like Jordan was that did like that in a in a theoretical world didn't mm -hmm. have to grow up in the spotlight. Like what would you do for a living? Like what kind of person would you be or would you be the same? Well, I grew up in a very creative household, so I could see myself being behind the camera. Um, I also like to write a lot. I like to paint, draw, design, um, learn music. But growing up, I wanted to be a doctor. And oh. then I got to high school and I was like, I'm not going to school for 10 more years. I could see me being a lot of different jobs. I always wanted to work at Starbucks. Really? <laughs> Why? I think I just love going to Starbucks and I would love to just know everything on the menu. Probably would make me not want to drink Starbucks sure. all the time, but... Would you be the type of employee that spells people's names wrong on the cup? You know everybody's name always gets no, spelled wrong. No, I always get my name spelled wrong. Unless they know who I am, then they spell it right. Recently it's been spelled right, thankfully, but... Moving on up in the world. Yeah, you know, when right they get your name right at Starbucks, then that's how you know you made it. But I definitely would take my time to get people's names right. I think it's very special when I see people's names like right and there's love into it. I love when people put love into things. Sure. And you know that they care and took the time to pay attention. So. Yeah, and I can taste the difference mm. too. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like you care this you one this is Machiato. great. Uh, you know, you kind of spoke to this a bit ago, but you said just because you have proximity to something doesn't mean that it's yours and you still have to worry about how you're going to pay your own bills. Um, and so the day after your father passed away, you went to work. Mm -hmm. What job was You that? really did your research. Always. I have to. <laughs> like, okay. what, what job were you working at that time? What, um, what I that? had set up a shoot for my friend. I got all these people to fly out and like it was pretty big people. So I was like... I don't want to miss the opportunity. I know my dad would have wanted me to be there and I put a lot of time and effort into this. So let me just show up. I was basically helping creative direct a shoot and put all the pieces together. So 
I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go. Still going to work. Just wait. Gotta get to it. You called yourself, or you have called yourself, a chronic overthinker. Yes. What does that mean? Well, I'm a Libra. I think that just is a character trait that we have. I said that before. Um, but I just think a lot, and it's very toxic. It really is, because you start doubting yourself, you start doubting things, you start doubting relationships, when really it's not that deep. A lot of people are focused on themselves and their own life, and they're not even thinking a 10% of what you're thinking. So whenever I get in my head too much, I'm like, just get out of it. But I can't help it. Sometimes I stay up late thinking about stuff that doesn't even matter. Yeah, like what? What would you stay up late thinking about? It could be business, it could be an interaction with somebody like, oh, I should have said this, but I didn't. And now I have the best response at two in the morning. Um, it could be what I ate during the day. Oh, maybe I should try this. It could be anything. It could literally be anything. One thing that maybe a, not, a lot of people don't know is that you have a sneaky, crazy sneaker collection. And yep. if we look what happens right here, I thought I was doing so with my classic Air Force Ones, but you have on a pair of Dior Jordan Ones. We've seen you with the Trophy Room Jordan Ones that were a gift and so many other shoes. How did this sneaker uh, interest even begin for you? Well, I really was going to wear my Ugg slippers, but they I wish said you, you were coming that. fresh, so I was like, okay. <laughs> I wish you would have came with the Ugg slippers. I wouldn't look this trash if, if okay, you had no, the Ugg slippers. Okay, no, you look on. great, but. My dad was really into sneakers. He had every color pair of Converse, you name. Um, he would make sure there was no scuffs or anything. He kept the toothbrush on deck, genetically passed down to me. I never could really afford sneakers like that, so I wasn't really like buying sneakers all the time when they dropped. I also didn't care when I was younger really about anything. I didn't care about clothing. Or, I was a tomboy growing up, so I would just wear my brother's big t-shirts, my, dad, my dad's big t-shirts. I didn't really care about any of that. As I got older and I got my own coin and I started paying attention and traveling and going to London, I love buying shoes in London. So naturally it just evolved into that. And then I'm like, all right, what's new? I'm gonna just get this and get this and then what's old and how can I collect and now it's just evolved into this crazy sneaker collection. That's worth a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> I got some, some good pieces. I'm sure Carl doesn't help with the addiction because he gives okay. you so many. No, Carl wears a size 20. So any shoe that he has has to be custom. So he kind of lives his sneakerhead dreams through me. He's like, damn, I can't get this, but I'm gonna get this for you because I wish I had it. So really that's where it comes from because he's like, I can't buy, I can't just go and buy shoes. So yeah. it's a blessing you know, though. I'm lucky, you're, you're I'm, I'm blessed. <laughs> yeah, you have broken the internet a bunch of times, right? <laughs> Whether it's for the busting challenge <laughs> or the Amazon leggings or getting a massage on a table. When these moments happen, be honest, do you know that it's about to go as crazy as they do? No, what's crazy is the massage video. For me, it's like, okay, let's, let's just call it what it is. We have a common theme with the, with the trends, with the, the viral moments. The massage video started it. I didn't know. The company actually posted the massage video and I reposted it because I'm like, oh, I'm just getting a massage. Not thinking I was going to wake up the next day and it'd be everywhere, trending, everybody talking about it. I thought it was funny. I was okay with that. But being a curvy girl, if any other like just getting a girl posted that video, it wouldn't be a problem or it wouldn't be controversial or it wouldn't be a thing. But because I have curves and I'm getting a massage, it's gonna move, it's gonna, things are gonna happen. So I thought it was funny, I had no problem with it. Carl and I were laughing about it, like it wasn't a big deal, but I had no idea. And I was like, Carl saw it and he's like, people about to go crazy about this video. I'm like, no, nobody's gonna talk about it. Like it's, it's a massage. Next thing I know it's trending. He's like, see, I told you. The busted challenge, I just did that for fun. I knew it was gonna, it's TikTok, it's a trend. I knew it was gonna go up. I didn't think it was gonna go that up. But I can't lie, I did film it a few times because I was like, nah, this isn't good enough. <laughs> and then the last one I was like, just fuck it, I don't care. There was one, it, it was either the Amazon leggings or the busted challenge that Carl 
like tweeted or quote tweeted something like, "Oh yeah, God is good" or something like something that. Something I think it was the busted challenge. Maybe it was the busted challenge. I think so. So he, but he knows when things are gonna go crazy. Yeah, and he's like totally fine with it. He's like, I don't care. Like you have it. You're young. Own it. Like yeah. it's awesome. He is super supportive. Does it ever to you get to the point where on the internet it feels like you're being over sexualized? Yeah, all the time. Um, I'm actually not even that kind of person. Like anything I do, like I said, being a curvy girl is gonna look more extra or more centralized because of my body. So I can wear a tank top and it could be low cut, it could be hot outside, but because I have boobs and whatever, it's gonna look more, oh, she's trying or she's sexual. Or I can be on vacation, post a bikini photo, and then it's a lot for people. But I can't help my body. I'm like, this is the youngest I will ever be, so I'm just gonna own it. And one day I'm gonna have a family and be a mom and most likely not be posting like this. And if I do, then that's what I wanna do. But I feel like we're young. You live in the moment, it's fine. I do feel like people just sexualize everything. It's like, it could be anything. It could be you drinking Starbucks and they're like, oh, she's doing whatever. So as long as you're comfortable with it and you choose to block out the noise, I think it's okay. But it's weird because I have a 14 year old sister who looks super grown and I did not look like that at her age. And I see grown men always commenting on her how old she is. And that's when I'm like, okay, I'm gonna respond. Yeah. Um, when it comes to me, I'm like more laid back, but when it comes to my family, I'm like, no, I have to say something. Yeah. So, it's just the world we live in now, I guess, and it's it's unfortunate, but you just gotta raise your sons to be, Better. you know, a king, you know? So. Yeah. Let's talk about some of your on-screen uh, new ambitions. We've seen you act in multiple movies at this point. We've also seen you in a bunch of music videos. We've seen you in Body with Megan Thee Stallion, Baby Birkin with Gunna, and Big Time with Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. I know that one meant a lot to you because, if I'm not mistaken, Rick Ross was your pop's favorite artist. Yes. Is that right? What is it like being not only in a Rick Ross music video, but just in hip hop videos in general, being embedded in the culture? You know what? It's funny because I felt like I had my, my video vixen moment. That time has passed unless there's like a amazing video that I love the creative direction. Well, every video I was in, I made sure that I liked the, the vision and the direction. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I feel like for me, somebody who loves music and loves to be tapped into the culture and everything, it's a good moment, it's a timestamp, it's something I can look back and you know reflect on, but big time happened, I met Rick Ross on a set of uh, Hip Hop Squares, mm -hmm. that's the, VH yeah, Hip Hop, yeah. And I was telling him how my dad was a huge fan, next thing you know, he's like, I have a video, you wanna be in it? I'm like, of course, yeah. like I can't turn that down. Um, Baby Birkin was also, I love Gunna's music, uh, and we've known each other for a while, so he's like, come be in the video, you get a break in. I'm like, say less. It, hold on, <laughs> was that a real trade? He was like, if you be in this video, you get a break in? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't do anything for free. Of course not. You know? Of course not. But to trade a break in instead of like payment is interesting. Like that's well, how- Well, yeah, I mean, the way I view break -ins, I'm like, this is an investment piece. Right. The value goes up. So people are like, oh, that's stupid spending that money on a bag. But really, it's like an investment. Yeah. The value is not going down. So in a sense, yeah, I got a little stock. Yeah, it's like a stock. Yeah. Wait, so it hits you like, hey, if you be in this video, you get a break. Well, it wasn't like that. Okay. It wasn't like, hey, be in the video, you get a break in. But it's like, hey, I want you to be in the video. I don't do the negotiating. The other people do. Yeah. That. Right. I'm just, I'm the face. Right. Right. I might be like, hey, say this, say do this, but right. no, I'm That's the face. The, <laughs> the song is called Baby Birkin. Wait, so do you I get a break in? Okay, cool, say less. But no, I don't really remember how that went, but that was how I got one of my first break-ins. Yeah, <laughs> and then how about the Megan Thee Stallion video, Body? How did that come together? Well, we're friends, so she was just like, hey, I want you to be in this video. I'm like, okay, cool. 
And what a the moment list. that was, yeah. Yeah, and that one, I mean, you know, I'll do some stuff for free, but. <laughs> yeah, but not, not everybody gets the free treatment. Yeah. Um, how many Birkins do you own now? Because we've seen you get a few gifted. Yeah, um, sheesh, I never thought I would be that girl or have those things, but I think I have maybe like 11. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of bread. <laughs> But it's a great investment, though, because yeah, if you ever decide you don't want it If I'm anymore. ever like, damn, I'm having a rainy day, I could just let go yeah. of one of the Birkins. And then that'll cover you and for then a I little got, minute. You know. No, I'm just... <laughs> There's a line that no man likes to hear from someone that they're potentially interested in. And that's oh, a line that Carl heard. And it, it was... Oh, you're like a brother to Carl me. Carl <laughs> is like a brother to me. I just now, talked about this yesterday. Carl is like a brother to me is like a... a, a it's like the nail in the coffin for a man who has an interest in a woman. <laughs> How did he climb the mountain and make it over the peak? Well, I know that you guys bonded over tragedy, unfortunately, but like when it came to him shooting that first shot, how was he able to make it out of Carl is like a brother to me? Okay, so Carl really was like a brother to me. I knew him through mutual friends. He's somebody that didn't really need anything from me. We were cool. We talked about, we would talk about other people, it was never like a love interest thing. I never saw a future with him. And I think that's probably how the best things happen. But um, I want to say he was persistent, but he also <laughs> wasn't. It's like, I think he kept the door open if there was a possibility, cool. But it just happened. It's just like, we were best friends. We talked all the time. I was there for him through his mom passing and I experienced something very similar. So I think when you go through so much with a person, authentically, you kind of just gravitate towards each other. And it was like, you know what? It would be nice to be with a nice guy, but I don't know. I'm like not used to that. And he's like, yeah, it would be nice to be with a girl who like has her own stuff and like is a loving family person. And it's like, oh, I mean, we could just date each other, but I was like, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm good. Like, and then it just happened. And now we're here. When you said that he kind of like left the door open, like, hey, you know, if you're interested, we can make it happen. What was that like the leaving of the door open? No, it wasn't really a word. It was a vibe. Like it wasn't, you could just feel it, it was the energy. It wasn't really like, hey, the door is open. I like you. It, he never did that. But I just, I felt, as a girl, you feel certain things. He and might have a different story, though. <laughs> okay, but now you're here, um, and you guys are seemingly very happy with one another. There's an expression that they say, dating a beautiful woman is not for the weak or the insecure. Mm -hmm. um, I told him that, too, before. You told him, like, beware. Yeah. And, and how and did he he's react? like, well, dating an athlete is not for the faint or the weak, either. So we're like, all right, bet. How have each of you guys been able to deal with that, right? Because he, I'm sure, has to deal with what the internet and other men have to say about you and vice versa with him. I think we just have a, we're, we see eye to eye. We communicate really well. I think communication is everything. I cannot be with somebody who cannot communicate because I speak my mind. If I feel something, I say it. If I see something, I say it. Um, but I think the number one thing is respect. And we both respect each other. We both are very open. And as long as you have the same understanding as people, I think things go smooth. I think that a lot of people get into relationships and they're just there for the moment or they don't really know what they want or they want their cake and they want to eat it too. And it's just, you guys have to meet at the right time when you're both on the same path. I think a lot of people you meet at the wrong time. You feel like it's the right person, but they wanted A and B and you want a C and D. But you gotta meet somebody when you both want A and B. So I think we both were just at that time where things aligned. Jody once said that she would have to approve of like any man that you brought around. <laughs> what was it like bringing him around the family for the first time as a love interest versus just It wasn't as like even a like that. He was already locked in with the family before we were together, so it was just like but bringing him around as a love interest versus like as your bro for the first time like what was that like um it was the same almost because like we're we still are best friends so when we're together it's not like super 
oh my God, all over each other. Like, I feel like we can be like that when it's just us, but with the family, we're like, bros. <laughs> Not actually. Once again, is he going back in the direction like of a brother to like me. a brother That's to me? That's nasty. That I have brothers is, and they're not, no. That line is crazy. He's like a brother <laughs> to me. Um, I felt that at the time, but. But he's made it. He's not, made it past that anywhere. moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> That's just, nasty. <laughs> Uh, there was a tweet once that he was like dispelling some rumors and he was like, man, the same haters will have something to say oh, yeah, when that... I put a ring on it. Mm -hmm. Is Carl someone you could see yourself building a family with? Wow, this is a lot of pressure. Um, yeah, for sure. I think one day, for sure. Is a family something that you see? Because a lot of people these days, oh, for, like myself, yeah, like, I'm like kinda... I grew up with three siblings. There was four of us. I grew up in a household where it like... I want kids. I love children. My brother just had a baby and I always am calling, blowing up his phone every day. Like, let me see him. He's like, it's not even about him anymore. So for sure, I want, I want like three to four kids. I love big families. Um, yeah, I want kids, but not now. When the time's right. Not now. A lot of people are rushing and doing that and I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. Live I can't even, you. I can't even figure out what I want to eat today. I can't figure out what you have to eat too. Like, I'm good. There are a lot of interesting dynamics <clears throat> between women and their NBA partners, right? Like Aisha Curry and Doug Christie and Bradley Beal. And everyone kind of takes on a different role when their mm -hmm. partner is receiving basketball criticism, right? Like on the court stuff, like some women will clap back on Twitter. Like some women want to go fight. What type of women will Jordan Woods be when Carl is getting on court? The thing is, uh, Carl's such a stand-up guy on the court. He really is such an amazing player. I think he actually is a very underrated player because he's averaging hella points and never gets any credit, but that's a totally different conversation. Um, but yeah, I just know what kind of person he is on the court and off the court, but I'm gonna stay in my lane. I don't think I need to go and defend him but if i have to i will i don't know because i haven't been in that position right. yet but i'm gonna stick to what i know and i'm gonna let him <laughs> stick to what he knows because i'm like i think that my identity is in me and then he has his own thing but if there is something i could put my two cents in and any chance i get the opportunity to defend somebody i love and care about of course but I'm going I'm to stick to, to what I know. And if y'all see this video and you see me going off on Twitter like months from now, just mind your business. We won't blame you. <laughs> Don't worry. On a more serious note, uh, Carl actually lost someone very close to him. He lost his mom and multiple other family members. Uh, what was it like kind of being there for him as he had to go through like such a tragedy? Um, I mean, tragedy. I, every person's tragedy is different. Every day is a new struggle or a new prophecy and we just deal with it as it comes. But I just understand what it looks like. So I am not quick to judge if you're having a bad day or you're having a great day. I'm just here to support you whether or not because a lot of people are there for a good time, but they don't know what it's like to be there when it's rough. Yeah. And they don't know what it's like to stick through the rough times. But once you stick through the rough times, the good times are way more rewarding way more better, but we just deal with it. Some days I have an attitude, some days I'm sad, sometimes the roles are reversed, mostly it's me having the attitude, but I think it's just a girl thing in general. Um, but we just understand each other and just, you know, try to support each other as much as we can. COVID-19 had such a, a negative impact on the world, but even being so close to it and seeing Carl go through, you know, what, COVID did to his family. And I know that you're very into holistic health. Mm -hmm. Does that make you hesitant when it comes to vaccines? Are you already vaccinated? What? I'm a big conspiracy theorist and I want to believe this and that. But when it comes to this, because I've seen how it has affected so many people, it's a real thing. It's not something to play with. So because of my lifestyle, because I travel and because I'm working in actually for work it's almost like I had to get it so I did get it um, the vaccine everything's good I support anybody who wants to get it. I think that 
it has, I've seen how it's changed the numbers, especially in California. We used to be one of the most contaminated cities and now we're one of the safest cities. Um, but I'm, I'm not, I can't pick a side. I can't tell you to do something and I can't tell you to not do it. You have to do your research and understand and know that there might not be the most research on it, so do your own research and yeah. see what works for you. But my number one tip is just stay healthy, keep your immunity up, um, take your vitamins, drink your water, meditate, keep your crystals, do whatever you got to do to make yourself feel better. But that's the ultimate cure is just staying healthy and taking care of your body. You say that you're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> what does that look like? Are you like in the basement, like in the dark, like? Watching no, videos I'm just and like stuff about other looking things. Looking up like moon landings and like chemtrails and stuff. Let me not get it too into it because I don't, I don't need anybody coming for me. But I, I definitely do my research. Is we could do a conspiracy theorist talk later. Another time. Okay. Complex Jordan yeah. conspiracy talk. There's a few sayings that you've said, and I just want to get your reaction to them. One of them was that individuality is your gift. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I think that we all want to be like everyone else, especially in this generation. You see something, you're like, I want it. But people don't understand that your individuality is your greatest gift. And I wish I knew that when I was younger because we all just want to feel like we belong. So we feel like belonging means doing the same things or dressing the same or looking the same. But I never looked like any of the girls I went to school with. I was like always the bigger girl, the tomboy. And I just, it really humbled me. It built character. And I had to understand that God gave me this body for a reason. And so I have to use this body as my vessel and figure it out. And this is my gift. Nobody is me and that is beautiful. I have two more statements that you made. One of them is, I think as people get to know me, they realize I'm a modern day Renaissance woman. Oh God, yeah. I did say that. I was just feeling myself. Um, Do you not feel like you're a modern day renaissance woman? I mean, it's hard to compare yourself to a renaissance woman being with what they actually went through, but in a sense of trying everything and doing everything, yes, but a modern day version. <laughs> okay, and lastly, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but you said something like for so long that you struggled to find like what your purpose was. Mm -hmm. Now that you're sitting here, you know, in this beautiful home and with all of the accolades that you have, do you feel like you've yet found the purpose or do you feel like you're still looking for it? I know the purpose, I'm figuring out the path. What's the purpose? The purpose is to help people. I think that we all have different jobs in life some people are to be a prophet some people are to be a healer some people are to be whatever it is you want to be i think i'm a healer i think a lot of healers go through a lot of trauma and that's what helps you allow yourself to learn how to heal people and a lot of healers also worry about everyone else and don't heal themselves so through my life and my journey, I'm learning a lot about myself. I'm learning a lot about how to help other people. And I just see my purpose long-term helping people, helping young people, helping a younger generation or an older generation because I'm somebody that's seen a lot, dealt with a lot, and will continue to go through things because that's life. But I think my purpose is to heal. And through healing, sometimes you need the capital. You need to do certain things to create the funds to be able to help people long term. So right now I'm just in the grind mode, building a business, building credibility, meeting people. So eventually long term, I can turn that into healing and helping. So the path, I'm figuring it out. I'm going down, I'm trying different things, but the purpose is to, is to heal and to help. Right. My last question for you, and it, this just came to me, but you know, I think a lot of people, particularly the public have like a perception of who Jordan Woods is. But now that they've seen this interview and have gotten to see maybe that you're a lot more like them than they think you are, uh, what is something that the public gets wrong about Jordan Woods and <laughs> now, you know, they can see who the real you is? Depends. Depends what kind of public we're talking because I see a lot of stuff online and then I get a lot of support in person. 
Um, last night I went to an event and I had a lot of people come up to me and say, you know, I appreciate how you carry yourself. I see what you're doing. I respect it. But then you see people online that say, she doesn't do anything. She that. I don't really care. I mean, I just hope that you take away that I'm just figuring it out. I'm a young woman. We all go through things. We all learn. And I'm just here for a good time. <laughs> Not a long time. So I'm going to do as much as I can. Um, I don't know. There's so many wrong things out there. But there are so many right things. So I'm going to focus on the right things.